thanks for the support as a channel member, Harold Rotmo. Look, I know there was a lot of love for the jumper yesterday. It, I don't know, we won a lot of football matches wearing it. We scored 10 goals to no reply. It looked like the answer to all our problems, but it's so itchy around my neck and it's warmer today. I can't stand to wear it. So I would rather another season of Thursday Night Football than another episode of having to wear that awful jumper. Hello and welcome to Club 4, part 20 of non League to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our final two league games of the season as we look to backdoor Kev our way into the Champions League through the league. As you can see, um, if we have a little look at the league table, Chelsea not really playing along and have won a game earlier today, I think it might, or yesterday. So Chelsea beat Norwich last night. with Sunday now. Saturday night, Chelsea beat Norwich. So they are six points ahead of us, um, but we do have a game in hand. And if we win both of our games, presumably we'll end up with a better goal difference as well. So first job, we need to beat Liverpool. Second job, final day of the season, we need to beat Southampton, whilst also hoping that Reading beat Chelsea, which seems pretty unlikely because Reading are bottom of the league. So I don't think... <laughs> I don't think we're getting into the Champions League this way, but at least we have the Europa League final coming up on Monday as potentially another route into the final. I wasn't sure what to do for this Liverpool game because it's an away game and my plan has always been to not use the diamond in away games because it's very attacking. But, I mean, we were all here yesterday. We saw how effective that diamond was. I don't really know how I can avoid using it. So... I'm not even going to try to avoid using it. And this is this is the team that I'm going to use. I don't I don't feel the need to fiddle around and make too much in the way of changes. And um, so we've got Francisco in goal, a back four of Sessignon, Banfalvi, Van Houston, and Kawamata Vargas at the base of the midfield. Gravenberch and right ahead of him, Ali behind George and Carlos up front. I think this is the ex I don't I don't actually think I've repicked this team. I think this is the exact team that played in the uh, Europa League semi-final. I think past Kev didn't didn't pick a team before closing things off. But looking at this, I don't think I need to change anything. Like I say, we all we were all there. We know how well this team performed. So I think they I think they deserve the opportunity to to continue playing together. It's gonna this is the first time I've done it away from home though. So it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see how we get on. Siri, will you shut your face? She's, she's, everything I've said to you was on screen. And now my phone is at it. I hate Apple. It's, and now they've heard me say it through the non, mm, I expect to win today. That's probably putting too much pressure on them, but I do expect to win. I, I don't, I don't, I don't expect to win. I hope for a win. I want us to keep it. I want, I want us to keep things alive going into that last day of the season because I think it all goes it all goes that little bit further towards convincing the board that we are making progress. Obviously last year we were a long way back in sixth place. We never looked competitive this year. We're still in with a chance of a top four finish, of a Champions League finish, as we go into the last episode of the league season. So they've got to see that progress is being made. Vargas hovering on the edge of the area, finds Rot back to Vargas. Now Sessignon in loads of space. Can he get the crossover? Finds Gravenberch. Sessignon again, cross to Antonio Carlos. And it's just over from Carlos. And that would have been that would have been a nice moment to to grab a first goal, just to start start settling some of the nerves a little bit because I look at that Liverpool team and there's a lot of names in that Liverpool team that I recognise which that's never a good thing because although I guess at this stage of the save you could argue it might be because it means they've probably got quite a lot of old players because we're we're getting on for 10 years in the future now eight years in the future but still some of these players are getting on a bit and I guess that might, they're in a similar sort of situation, Liverpool, to what Spurs were in two years ago when I arrived, in that they've got a lot, you look at the squad and think, wow, that's a really good squad. And then you get settled into it and you realise, actually, this is a lot of 30 and 31 year olds who who were really good at the start of the save, but it's probably time for them to, to move on. So hopefully... He's, he's one of them, isn't he? I mean, he's, I don't even know how old he is. He's probably not even 30 yet in the save. I think it's wishful thinking, but 
we have gone behind just before half time to a goal from Kai Havertz, and um, it's a decent finish. I'll I'll give him that. That's a decent finish. The first time Francisco has been beaten, I think, since he's been in the team ahead of Pickford. Obviously, Pickford's injured. He's not in. He's not in by choice, but we're telling him that he is. Let's get passionate. Look, you know as well as I do, the first half wasn't good enough. Show him. I like that. That that's a team talk I've not seen before. I, to be fair, I think we played quite well in that first half. It was certainly competitive, but if if the if the players are happy to be told it wasn't good enough, I'm certainly happy to tell them that. Vargas plays it forward to Deli Ali, who is looking to release Kawamata. I think it's Kawamata who was overlapping. In fact, it can't be because he stayed up there. That must be Kawamata back there. I guess the one change we probably could have made from the uh, from the cup game is Jair probably is fit enough to be starting again now. And I do feel like he probably needs to be in this team because it gives us that extra little bit of attacking oomph. I am also feeling that maybe the 4-3-3 is the way to go for big away games. We've had this problem in this series before. I not Was it earlier in, the time, in my time at Spurs? I think it might have been when we were at Barnsley where we would look really good until we went away from home against the really good sides. And I think... I don't think we can go away from home against a good team with a positive mentality and two players up front and expect to not get beaten. And I think we've learned that today. We're going to have to accept we're not going to be in the Champions League, at least through the league. We've still got a good chance to get there through the um, through the Europa League, but we're not going to get. We're going to do a triple change. We're going to bring Jair on as well. Uh, we're not going to get there through the league because. We've messed up a little bit tactically here today. I think it's the first time the diamond's been beaten. And I think we do need to use it sparingly. And you, by all means, use it for the home games. Use it for the games we're supposed to win. Those frustrating games where we're not scoring goals, that's the time to do this. But those games where previously we were keeping things tight with the 4-3-3, we're now losing 3-0. We weren't losing games like this before. So this is the... Okay, it's 2-0 because that goal has been disallowed. But this is the kind of game where we perhaps would have benefited from keeping things tight and and nicking a goal late on. And that's not what we've done at all. And it does give me a little bit of food for thought for that Europa League final. Because if we go there and do this and Valencia just counter-attack us, then we're going to lose, aren't we? We've just been absolutely battered by Liverpool. That has brought me back down to earth with a little bit of a bump from what happened in yesterday's video. Um, crazy Kirby's back, shouting at him at full time. We will attack Southampton with the diamond, but I am now thinking maybe for that Europa League final, we go back to the 4-3-3. Let me know your thoughts on that down in the comments. Just one change for the Southampton game then. We've uh, brought Jair back in at right back. I threatened I was going to do it. Um, I have now done it. Um, I've also not got a goalkeeper on the bench because Pickford's still injured and the lad who was there um, is unavailable. He's doing, I guess, under 23s or something today. Um, so, no, Jaden Sancho's our substitute goalkeeper and I'm sure he'll have a lovely time doing it. He's been injured for a while anyway. There's no fear of him having to come on. But he's uh, he's there just to be involved. Come on, lads. We'll qualify for the Europa Conference League if we win here. Yay for us. My word. Um, teams such as ours should be winning this game with no problem at all. That's the more accurate one of the two. So Southampton are down in 16th place. They are safe from relegation, just. But I would like to think we should have the beating of them. Um, and if we don't, we're definitely doing the 4-3-3. Or, wear, I guess, wearing the jumper for the Europa League final. Perhaps the jumper is the key. Um, George has just scored after two minutes, though, to suggest that maybe I don't need the jumper. Maybe it was, as suspected, I was just being a little bit too ambitious against... Although a, a Liverpool side that's had a relatively poor season, they're still Liverpool, and as such, probably should have gone there with a little bit more respect in mind, rather than trying to just smash them the way we smashed Arsenal. Because the Arsenal game was at home. They were ripe for the smashing. Uh, but Southampton are coming at us here to try and to try and get this 
keep stay in the game. I, a quick glance at the Southampton side. It looks like they've kind of got a, a dad's army 11 because there's names in there that I recognise, but presumably because they're playing for Southampton and Southampton are 16th, they're well past it. You can see they've got Mo Salah in there. For, he's, the, he's the big one who sticks out as, OK, you're playing for 16th place Southampton. You're probably about 40 now. That's the only reason you're there, surely. I don't want... They've got Aaron Ramsey knocking down on the bench as well, who... I mean, he must be nearly 60 years old in game. Um, <laughs> I realise that makes him 52 in real life, which I don't think he is. But in my head, he left the Premier League to go and retire to an easy league. Um, I know probably the reality of the situation is a little bit different um, because I hear Juventus have got some quite good players and pay a lot of money. But still, he left the Premier League to go and retire to an easy league. Um, so he must be in his mid-30s, even though he's probably mid-20s. I guess. Look at me. Almost knowing stuff about modern football, but not quite knowing enough to have anything valid to say. Uh, frustratingly, it does look like Chelsea are slipping up against Reading. So if we had have picked up our three points against Liverpool, we might have actually... I mean, in actual fact, we wouldn't have been, but it's still have been a point behind them. So I guess they're drawing against Reading. So we're not going to worry too much. But here is Jaya. This is what we've missed while he's been injured. Look at the ridiculousness of our right-back doing that. Having him and Sessignon as our, as our full-backs, it really, does, it really does tell me that we don't need wingers because those two are quite capable of being the wingers. What a goal from Deli Ali to get his 20th goal of the season. He is... I wish he was five years younger because I would build the entire team around him because he has been that good this year. And uh, I, I, I feel a little bit like I uh, maybe should have given him a bit more game time last year when Gibbs White was dominating the attacking midfield position. But then I couldn't notice Deli, Deli Ali because I was too busy fighting off all the people demanding Madison. Clearly, Ali was the man all along. Madison... Madison will get his year next year, I guess. We've had the Gibbs White year. We've had the Alley year. Next year will be the, the year of James Madison and he'll emerge just accidentally, probably the same way Delhi Alley has. It'll, it'll come through as my left back or something, just in a in a position I wasn't expecting him to be playing in. There is veteran winger Mo Salah going off. We can now safely look at him and see how old he is. 35 years old now. Um joined on a free transfer from Barcelona last summer. Barcelona spending 39 million on him seems a little bit weird. To be fair, it was only two years ago he was scoring a decent number of goals for them, though. So he's not completely past it. If I'd have been at Barnsley, I think I'd have been I think I'd have been keeping an eye out for that as a potential transfer. Um, right, Vargas, no, Rot, in fact, is going to come off. We're going to run, bring Victor on for Rot. Um, we're going to bring Rosso on for Madison and just swap those two over. Rosso, definitely more of the support striker of the two. Lots of people have told me all about his his very poor finishing and how he's never going to get lots of goals for me. Luckily, that's not what he's there for. He's my support striker. Vargas can come off as the final change. Fodderingham can come on for him and play in that deep midfield position. And once again, we've shown when we are at home, the the diamond is very, very effective. So now we've just got to decide whether we consider ourselves to be at home or not for the Europa League final. And I really don't know at this stage what the best thing to do is whether whether we go with this attacking system or whether we go there and get a feel for how good Valencia are. I think we probably need to have a little look to see where they are in La Liga. And that will give us a little bit of a an idea of how we should be going into that game because obviously if they're if they're challenging for the title in La Liga then we probably need to take them as a serious threat whereas if they're similar to us sort of fifth sixth place in La Liga I'd like to think fifth place in the Premier League more often than not could take fifth place in La Liga certainly in football manager land maybe that's not always the case in real life but in football manager the weaker Premier League teams are always a little bit better than the weaker teams in all the other countries because there's so much money in the Premier League compared to those other leagues. I know in Spain you've got Real Madrid and Barcelona and they've got oodles of cash and throw massive fees around. But once you get beyond them, the rest of the league doesn't have anywhere near the kind of money that Premier League teams do. What is happening here, by the way? This is what happened against Everton a couple of games ago. We... Uh, we we do seem to give away big leads with the with the diamond a little bit. Again, another reason for maybe not playing it for entire matches. 
We need to keep an eye on that. But we have finished fifth. There's the confirmation. Um, Jaya is injured again. My word. There's your confirmation we've qualified for the Europa League. Um, is Haidara going there? But I think he. I don't think he's played enough games in the end, so we might have to actually sell him in the summer, which is a little bit of a shame. I think he's one game short of a big move to Brighton, um, which is very upsetting. Um, the board, are they happy with this as a finish? Probably not. Are they not disgusted with it? Um, lots of failure in there. Is my contract, have I got a contract for next season? Because they might just not renew me. Yeah, I've got a contract for next season. We're good. Now, hopefully, we go and win the Europa League, get a whole load of money to spend. Everybody's happy. Where are Valencia in the Liga? They're third. And they kind of were trying to... Mm, okay. I think we need to go in with the 4-3-3 for that game and play it by ear a little bit. Again, let me know down in the comments. What should I be doing? If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.